Something amazing happened today. It always happened. Uh, we had a, a, a person, uh, it's a pastor who was here and he was having some meetings and he was, he was asked the question if he can take over tonight for the service and he said yes. And at the end he had to leave and in that period of time, I was asking God, why did you reveal to me something to share with the school and somebody else is taking over? And I said, but you have a plan. Maybe this is not the time. And then, so I'm here. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this time that we're going to spend together. And I know that that is, is a blessing, what you give me, O oh Lord. And, and I believe that, that when somebody comes and shares what you give, um, is, is, is great. That's what you, you want us to do, uh, to receive from your hand, to give. So we ask you, Lord, to be with us and that you can lead the words and, and impress the hearts uh, for us to get closer to you, please. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Um, when the opportunity comes for us to, to share um, with others the word of God, it's always the question what what is it that I can share and and so when I was praying to God and asking what is it you want me to, to share it, it was it was the impression to talk about the love of God and and he he wanted more than anything to touch my heart and says uh, and says to me this is how much I love you and so I start uh, praying and asking God, what do you want me to, to share? And, and so in the process of sharing with you some of the things that I was impressed to study, uh, I'm going to share all the things that, that he, he presented to me. But let's see. So I invite you to look in Romans 5, 8. More than any other thing is sharing with you what God uh, gave me. And it says there, you probably by memory knows this verse, but God demonstrated his own love towards us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And when I was praying and asking God, another verse came to my mind, and you know this by memory. 1 John 4 what is First John four eight? That whoever who don't know who whoever it comes in Spanish. The ones who don't know God, the no, the ones who not love don't know God because God is love. Can you say it right, proper way? <laughs> Porque de tal manera amó Dios al mundo. No, ese es Juan tres dieciséis. El que no ama no conoce a Dios porque Dios es. So cómo lo dicen en inglés? Say it in English. There you go. So, I'm, I'm going to share with you the great love of God. So God says, the greatest definition of love is God. And like, the greatest definition of love is God. But God is a person. So then you go to 1 Corinthians 13, and you know what it is about, right? So you know 1 Corinthians 13. So we're going to put some of those things that you already know on 1 Corinthians 13. And so if you have your Bible or your phone that you can look up, uh, I know I'm going to put it on the screen, but it says there, starting with verse 4, Love suffers 
long. Now, probably on the screen is different, but it says that love is a long suffering. And so love does not envy, the, does not, the, not parade himself, is not puff up, do not behave rudely, do not seek his own, do not provoke all things no evil, do not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Bear all things, believe all things, hope all things, and endures all things. Love never fails, and it will never banish. In general, when we use these quotes in the scripture, we apply it to humans. Like when I was reading, it says, well, um, all these characteristics, I'm trying to see it if I have them, and I said, no, I'm sure on all of them. But because I'm talking and I was researching and I was asking God to show me his love, so he says, I'm love, I'm the greatest definition of love, and this is all the characteristics of who I am, because I'm love. So now I see 1 Corinthians 13 as a description of God. Instead of applying it to a person, I apply it exactly to who he is, the source of this love and the definition of this love. So really, is God describing himself? Now, Lucifer, when he was in heaven, he was, he was kind of saying, you're not what you're saying that you are. He was putting this, this question mark to all the angels in heaven because they, he makes statements that it was kind of questioning the character of God, of the essence of who God was or is. And you are very familiar with all this questioning. One of them was saying, why we have to obey God or obey his, his, his commandments, his rules, his principles? Why we don't, on our own, just do what we please? We are angels. We're perfect. We cannot commit any error. As God cannot commit any error, we can't. We cannot. So why we have to follow these principles that reign in heaven? And with that question, was saying, well, God probably is not really who he is claiming to be because if we had to submit on these principles, we're not really free. Now, what, what I was talking, what in my mind was all this this reasoning is because when you come to this earth, it's what he did with Eve. And he kind of Im implied to her that God was not what she thought that God was. When he asked them not to eat from this tree of the good, the knowledge of good and evil, it was implying that they were really not really free to do as they please because they cannot eat from this tree. And so when, when this enemy of God, I'm going to call it like that, says to Eve, well, God prohibited you to eat from all the trees that are here in the garden. She said, no, I can eat from every tree except this one. Kind of saying, well, but so you're free to eat, but not this one, so you're really not free to eat. Because if you really want to eat everything that is here, well, you have to eat from there, from that one. But you can't. God says no. And probably you already meditate about this, but in terms of questioning who God is and how wonderful is his love for us, this, pro, this rule, this commandment not to eat from this tree it was based on love and and it was clear when god says the day you eat from it you surely die so 
I want to protect you. I don't want you to die. I don't want you to suffer anything. So when the enemy comes and says, well, you're really not free, really God is not what he is claiming to be because he prohibited you this. His character is not what he is claiming to be. Eve fall for it. And she ate. So now, the, this reality of the consequences of that, dis, that disobedience brought death and misery to this world that now the enemy is saying is God's fault. Because he didn't do something for you not to do this. And that's what he does in a lot of cases. And uh, probably I had to explain a little bit on this because it's, for me, very important to, to bring it up in actual examples. For example, my, my wife asked me one day this question about this child who was eight years old, and he was raised in a Christian home, and he was being abused sexually. And she asked me this question, how come this kid was praying to God and says, please, I want this to stop, and it's not happening? And so he grew up to hate God. He couldn't listen a presentation about the love of God, that God is love, he, he loved us so much, and, and he cares so much for us when he was praying for this to, to stop, and it didn't happen. So, I, I'm going to ask you a question. I want to ask you this question. Who do you think it will be in this list of sinners who are a reason to hate, to, to mislead, to hate God, to mislead anybody to hate God like this child who was being abused by a parent and, and now has a wrong conception of the love of God. Probably that parent will be in that list. For example, another one, it will be Hitler that, that was leading so many soldiers to kill so many innocent people. I don't know how many others, probably Judas, maybe, or a betrayer, but it's not really, well, he sold Jesus for money to get a profit. And in and, and, and some way, um, misrepresent the character of God. But so in this list, of people who are acting free according to the enemy who comes when they are making a decision and questioning the character of God if they don't do as they please because they have to submit to a commandment of God. And because of that, then the character of God is questionable because if you cannot act freely, 
then, then God is not who is he claimed that he is. Because you're not really free to do as you please. So these people act according to what they consider liberty, and they do as they please, and because of that, the suffering comes. For example, Eve considered that, that acting up according to her freedom was to eat from this tree, and because of that, death came, they, death came to this earth. And with that, all the other things that came, she, didn't even, she even witnessed her own son killing her other son, the sibling. And that is being used and thrown to God as he is responsible for this. When we are being acting according to the, the intention that this enemy presented to us, that we are kind of claiming our freedom, but really God from the beginning presented to us that his love for us was to give us a commandment. I know. Even for me, it's a little bit difficult to explain it. So, let me just say it before we keep going that God had to act and present really who he is, and the best way he did it was for Jesus to come and, and live it in his own life. And so, in this process, God present the most ex ex extraordinary expression of his love being the creator of this planet and the whole the whole universe of God and relations with all this creation he humbled himself. He turned himself into nothing because of his greater, his greater love for you and me. But we don't understand this because we've never been in there. We've never been in heaven. We don't know what it looks like, what it is. Just the pictures that you saw on the beginning, it was, it's just a picture. It's just a section of the whole universe of God where we are in there, it, it were, we will be considered nothing the next. And that eternal existence of God, where just one little shot of the universe of God, and then us who are nothing in that universe of God, or maybe it is. Oh, I went the other direction. Sorry. There you go. That's our galaxy. And of course, you are probably very familiar with this, and that's our solar system. And so we are in a little tiny parti particle of that that is our planet. And so that's where we are inside of that planet. So this love of God who has been questioning by the actions that we ourselves make a decision to do contrary to God who is trying to prevent us from the beginning to suffer and to be the cause of suffering to others. Now he has to show us really who he is. And to do that, he has to come and leave everything that he had and he is part of to come in and humble himself to this little world. And so that is so great that our minds cannot really comprehend. We're going to 
be exposed to this steam for eternity and we're still not going to be able to grasp it. Is the scripture says that that the 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 width, the depth and the height of the love of God, we're never going to reach to it. That's how great his love is for us. And we're going to be exposed to it for trillions and trillions of years in the presence of God. And we're still going to be amazed of how much he loves us. So the, God's wonderful purpose of grace, the mystery of their study through the endless ages, both the redeemed and the fallen and the unfallen beings will find in the cross of Christ their science and their song. So that's why we're going to be singing forever. <laughs> and we're not going to feel not to sing or to stop singing and, and thanking God for his gracious love. Uh, so, the cross is very important. I is another thing to, to talk about, but we're going to have to involve it in this because the cross is, is really the, the momentum, the, 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 the most beautiful expression that, that ends and his life in a, in a way that that is more than what we can even comprehend right now. Even, even if you and I have been in the church or studying the scripture for years, like I've been 39 years, and to me it was a theme that I already kind of understand it, and now I said to God, um, forgive me, I'm sorry, I thought that I understood the cross. And of course not. <laughs> when I... And when, when, I, when God started presenting it to me, he says, well, you had to go back to when I came to this world, when I came as a baby, for you to start just grabbing a little bit of what it means, the cross. And, and when I was reading in the Desire of Ages, the chapters about Jesus when he came like one of us, it says there that, that the enemy, I'm going to call it enemy, you know, says, you know who, who I'm talking about. He was in awe when he saw Jesus as a baby. He got speechless when he knew that was his creator. And he is being in heaven. He, he, he envied him. He knew he was, he was the closest angel to the throne of God and his presence. He knows what is up there, how to look, all the creation of God. And when he saw God like one of us, he was impressed, more than impressed. He was shocked. <laughs> and this... Is where, where my heart was start melting. I don't know what is up there. But just to, to think about it, start about it, start, is, 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 is study about it, and look of what he did for me. It was start doing something in my heart. The Almighty God wrapped in humanity to reveal the true character of God. You see, you and I understand that who is being judged right now is God. Why you save him and not save this? What are you going to do for this child who is so rebellious or why you didn't help this one who is so innocent 
and needed your help. But God revealed his character already. He himself was not help. He himself was the victim. But at the same time, he was giving us an example and encouraged us to do what he, from the beginning, asked the angels to do and the humans to do, is to submit to his Father. And he came and he did it perfectly. And at the same time, make an example and an offering to present to God to be able to save us and pay the penalty of our sins. So the Son of God who came from the Father will a is the Father will able to reveal the true character of the Father to the universe. That's the uh, uh, step to Christ. So you know this verse, right? John 3 16. Right? So what is start the ver the this verse with? For God so loved the world. He, he gave his only begotten son. So whoever believes in him will not perish but has everlasting life. That's the love of God. So even when we were dead in our sins, Jesus died for us. We already said it. Because that's why this plan of salvation is based on grace, because you and I don't deserve it. We cannot do anything to move the heart of God to love us more. So that grace is being presented to us, and of course, as a gift, because you and I cannot work it out. So that grace, it came to be crystallized in the life of Jesus. That's why John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus, says this is the Lamb of God. Because he was offered before the foundation of this world with unconditional forgiveness. You see, today, anybody who reject this love still the grace of God is allowing that person to exist and live and had an opportunity to have eternal life to live with God forever because God loved that person no matter their condition as well as the one who accept him because I hope, and this is my, my prayer tonight, is that we can be able to grasp a little bit his love for us that when he sees any commandment, any direction, any, any counsel from God is with the intention for us not to get hurt and not to hurt others. Because his, his, his commandments and his ordinance and his leadership and his counsel is based on love. But Satan comes and, of course, change it all. So his character is being manifested in the person of Jesus. That's why he said it a lot of times. I came to reveal my father who saw God who see me, he sees my father. Because one of, you remember one of the disciples says, show us the father? And he says, who, whoever see me, see my father. Because him and I, were one. So he humbled himself. I heard today a, a definition of humbleness that was interesting. And he says that it is the freedom do not see self. And Jesus, that's what he did. And that's what 
Paul a lot of times says it's not me anymore, it's Jesus in me. He lost himself in Jesus. But Jesus came to reveal the character of God. And that's why we, when he says that you see me, you see the Father. Because he lost his, himself in representing the Father. He took our place because that's the definition of love. And so he don't want us to suffer. He don't want us to, to die. So he took our place. And in all this process, the enemy is making it harder. But in his mind, in the mind of, of God, he's showing more clearly how much he loves us. The most the, the, most the enemy is trying to, to make him suffer, more is revealing how much God loves us. And so, this is the greatest love that is being shown because the enemy, it was, it was playing hard to him. But the love of God is greater. So, he made him suffer, but he was showing more the love of God in a mighty way, incredibly, to the point that, that even there, he prayed for his enemies. You see, let me make a, a little parenthesis here. I'm so, so amazed from people who are being treated wrong, being incarcerated, being punished, being violated, and these people love their enemies. And I said, from where you got this? Don't have any logic to me. And it's because they tasted the love of God. In, in a way that I want to experience. Because when we do that, we understand beyond what we suffer and what we experience in our flesh. I know I had to close very soon. He poured out his soul for us. And I found this quote is so interesting. All the parental love which has come down from generation to generation through the channels of human hearts, all the springs of tenderness which have opened in the soul of men are but as tiny brook to the boundless ocean when compared with the infinite and exhaustless love of God. Tongue cannot utter it. Pen cannot portray it. You may meditate upon it every day of your life. You may search the scriptures diligently in order to understand it. You may sum every power and capability that God has given you in the endeavor to comprehend the love and compassion of the Heavenly Father, and yet there is an infinitely beyond. There's so much counsel about meditating on the love of God. So he was numbered with the transgressors. So every single action that Jesus did in this earth was to represent truly the character of God and how much he loves us. So, so not only that, I don't know why, okay. So he, he still loves us so much that now we can go boldly to the throne of God and he is interceding for us. Christ was to identify himself with the interests and needs of humanity. He who was one with God has linked himself to, with the children of men by ties that are never to be broken, bearing our human form before the Father's throne, and through etern eternal ages, one with the race he has, he has redeemed, the, sa the Son of Man. 
and all this that men might be uplifted from the ruin and degradation of sin. At the same time that Jesus lift us up, Satan is trying to put us down. You know, how many of you feel so depressed and so sad and so that you are consider yourself not attractive, not smart, and if you and I will comprehend and bring it to our present consciousness, how much he loved us and how much value we have on the eyes of God, you will not allow those things to take over you. And so the psalm, the, one of the writers on the, psalm, the psalms and the scriptures says, who is man for you to remember him? Because he considered in his meditation the existence of us, of humans, compared to God and reflects on it and says, who are we for him who come and visit us? And of course, God responded to him. He says, you're my son. I will give anything for you. I will give my whole life for you. I'm going to die for you. So this robe, woman in the looms of heaven, has is not one thread of human devising. That's why when we understand this love of God, we're never going to consider that we're doing anything to gain that salvation, any merits. Whatever you do is going to have to be moved by the love of God. It cannot be anything else. Christ, in his humanity, threw out a perfect character, and his character he offers to impart to us everything that we of ourselves can do is defiled by, by sin. On the light of what we just contemplating, can you imagine us thinking that we can do something to gain salvation or to impress God? But the Son of God was manifested to take away our sins, and in Him is no sin. Christ was treated, you know this, as we deserve, that we might be treated as He deserved. See, this is the love of God. He was condemned for our sins in which he had no share, that we might be justified by his righteousness in which we have no share. He suffered the death which was ours, that we might receive the life which has, was his. With his stripes we are healed. This is the love of God. Now that's a sentence in Spanish. You can read it. It is beautiful. It's, it's in the step to Christ in Spanish. I don't know in English. It's not there. But I translated it. Oh, somebody helped me translate it. Every human bond may be broken. Broken brothers separate from brother. A mother may forget her children. The stars vary and their fixed paths. But certainly one thing that never changes. What is it? The love of God. So no matter, no, no matter what you do or say, God's going to love you. Are you going to be lost because God's going to respect your decision? But God loves you still. 1 Corinthians 2, 2 says, For I determined not to know anything else among you but Jesus and Jesus crucified. Paul was able to understand this love in a mighty way. And so we have to at the cross of Calvary, love and was face to face. You know, Pastor Noah. Selfishness. Because the love, love, one, one of the, 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 the characteristics of love is that is not looking for himself, for, you know, self, right? So that's Jesus. It's a poem that I don't know if it makes sense to you. You can read it. It is a friend of mine when I was 
15 who wrote this poem in Spanish. Oh, no, this is not. This is another one. This is another one. This is not my friend. You can read it. And what is the meaning of it, I hope you can get it. I don't have to read it for you. But really, this is what it has to be our Christian life. It has to be everything that we do and in our spiritual walk with God has to be moved. It has to be tinted with the love of God. Anything, whatever we do. And the only way this can happen is when we contemplate his love and, exp and experience it. Not anything else. It cannot be because this is greater than anything. This is really the issue. From the beginning, it was doubting the character of God. What was prohibited for them, it should have been represented to their minds that was the love of God being presented to them for them not to get hurt. But they, they believe a lie that the enemy presented to them, says God is not what he is claiming to be. But it is love. So two reasons you can serve God. For obligation, for fear, or for love. He showed us what it is to serve God. So this is the everlasting gospel. Oh, almost done. That has to be preached to the whole world. Everlasting gospel. Before this creation, God loves us already. This is a poem that my friend wrote. And it talks about these birds that, that comes to the cross and start taking those, those thorns and thistles from the, from the head of Jesus. And, and then he reflects and says, you know what? They took all those thorns from Jesus' head, and, but now they're back. Every time that a person chooses contrary to God is putting a thorn in his forehead. And so he described a little bit what can be those thorns, says what it is there. And he's in a, in a poem kind, kind of represented and says, but we, can, we that understand the sufferings of Jesus and why he did all this and, and all of that was because he loved us so much. So he's saying, who, who can be one of those birds? And he's asked the question and they says, if you are one of those, then you are going to start pulling those thorns from the, from the temples, the, uh, the Savior's temple. You're going to start pulling them one by one. And, and so, so when somebody do wrong, you're going to do the opposite. Because you understand the love of God. And, and not only that, it will get to a point that the only way that it can, it can be done in your heart is because because you see the, the face of Jesus with tender love. And that's the reason you will forgive the ones who come and cause the death of Jesus. So, by contemplating him, his teachings, his sufferings, and the infinite sacrifice made by him for the redemption of the race, we may straighten our faith, quicken our love, and become more deeply Im 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 imbued with the Spirit which sustain our Savior. Everything noble and generous in men will respond to the contemplation of Christ upon the cross. And so that's why I was praying to God what do you want me to keep studying? What do you want me to, to spend my time in? And is 
this. Never can the cause of our redemption be realized until the redeemed shall stand with the Redeemer before the throne of God. Because here we're just going to see part of it, not even a bit. Then we shall cast our crowns on, at his feet and raise the and raise the song, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessings. So, forgive my going to different directions. I wanted to cover something that is just, is too much. The Bible says we, the Spirit prophesied said too, that we're going to study it for eternity. And I believe that our lives will be different. And I'm praying to God to make my life different. And contemplating the cross. And really get a revelation of his love in my life. And that's my prayer for you. That we can be transformed by that love of God. So let's pray and we're going to end. Thank you for your attention. Let's pray, kneel and pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for revealing your character, you You are so great for our fine minds to understand you, but you reveal yourself through Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, because every act and word that came from him was representing that love for us. Every action, every thought, every word, and he left us up because he will identify himself for eternity with us. Help us to treasure this, O oh Lord. Help us to embrace it. Help us to appreciate it. Help us to meditate on it. Help us, O oh Lord, not to believe those lies that Satan comes and put us down to put us down and make us feel horrible and to rebel against you. Help us, O oh Lord, to walk in trust that you really, really love us. Thank you. Permit it, uh, help us, O oh Lord, this night to, to take it to heart and to believe it and to embrace it and to walk according to it. Please we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks for joining us for our prayer meeting. Feel free to continue praying wherever you may be because we believe that prayer changes things. If you've been blessed by our program, why not leave a special prayer request or a praise report in the comments below?